Good morning, good day everyone. This is Hunter Dixon here in Markdale, Ontario. My guest today is Mark Barron from, well, he's currently living in Melbourne, Australia. Mm -hmm. um, Mark, since 1981, which was a long time ago, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mark has been focused on internet and computer networking. So over the past 37 years, he has worked with such companies as Cisco Systems, Digital Equipment Corporation, and Akame Technologies. During the 15 years Mark was with Akame, he traveled extensively through Asia, including China, Japan, South Korea, and India. In fact, while he was with Akame, Mark's team built internet infrastructure to carry web 1.0 and web 2.0 traffic. Now, I'm going to say right off the bat, I am vaguely familiar with some of these terms. However, our, our listeners will definitely be helped by anything that you can share that will make sense to us so we can have more impact on the world. Recently, Mark decided to leave Akame to explore new developments taking place in cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, which is very exciting, and energy. We know that huge changes have taken place in both technology and traffic volumes over the years. I don't think the general person thinks about it. It's pretty comfortable. So today, Mark's going to walk us through the main differences among Web 1.0, Web 2.0, and will try and help us understand why Web 3.0 with blockchain is a paradigm changer. Welcome, Mark Barron, to our show today. It's called Uncommon Wisdom. Oh, and I look forward to what, uh, we. first of all, I really appreciate you taking the time. We're just no getting... Problem sort of wrapping up our day here in Canada and you're just starting your day up there in Australia? You're right. It's, yep, it's 8 a.m. in the morning and it's, yeah, we're sort of, we're in our autumn and heading towards winter. Right? Oh. <laughs> well, we're in winter, just heading towards spring and spring is a very long time coming. <laughs> we still, we are two degrees today. So I met right, Mark great. on a call um, with Abundance, so Abundance 360. And it was an abundance call that uh, we were in just a group of five of us sharing our uh, massive tr transformative purposes. And Mark, what really interested me was when you spoke about the web 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0, and, and how the significant differences between them each, it really mm -hmm. captured my attention. Can you give us an overview of what you think people in general should know about 1.0, 2.0, and now 3.0? Sure, okay. Uh, yeah, so, so, so when 1.0, we can think of you know, the internet that we were using uh, you know, late 90s, uh, you know, early, you know, early 2000, when really a lot of people were accessing the internet via things like dial-up and you know, low speed broadband, you know, so, uh, so that's when we can think of days of, you know, AOL and, uh, you know, people dialing in a lot to, uh, to, you know, the various services and just generally services being quite slow, downloads being very slow. Uh, what kind really of services I, were they at that time? So, you know, it was, you know, browsing the internet, browsing the internet but really, you uh, uh, basic, you know, more, uh, you know, sharing of information, static content. So you would go to someone's website and it would be, you know, web, website, your web's mainly just written in, in things like HTML and uh, mainly text, mainly you know, some pictures, uh, okay. but really sort of uh, not, you know, virtually no video because video was virtually uh, just impossible. You know, it was very slow and often... Uh, people also in various countries, you know, download limits and things like that would make it all very expensive, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, and in in those days, I'd say that you know the the content would be 
very much centralized. So if you went to a website, it's typically located centrally. I don't know, might be in New York, might be in in Toronto, but uh, but the but the website would be located in one place, and the users would be worldwide. And uh, and then response times across the globe would be would be very slow, right? Okay. Uh, but generally, you know, I'd say fairly, you know, pretty much uh, static content. You know, people would publish something. The tools to publish things were pretty hard. People would have to learn things like HTML, and it was it was uh, right. they would put things there, but it was generally hard work. And then also, I'd say a big use of of the internet back then was really uh, email uh, and people principally accessing all of these services from desktop computers, you know, so perhaps their desktop computer at the office, desktop computer at home, okay. uh, maybe a laptop, but that was pretty much uh, 1.0. Right? Okay, good. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, you know, and then I'd say we rapidly, you know, through, the last couple of decades, we evolved, to, you know, we progressed to 2.0. And 2.0 was then, uh, you know, things like in addition to people using the, uh, you, know, the, you know, the internet from their desktop and laptops, they also, mobile started to become very big. And so broadband, you know, broadband became much bigger. And so people's access speeds uh, became quicker. Uh, we also then saw that, you know, progression of, of say, smartphones, Entering the market, you know, when you think about it, the iPhone was really only uh, 10 years old. But in that time, you know, a lot of people's use has moved off really even the, the laptop to using their smartphone, to using uh, tablets like iPads and, you know, whether it's Samsung and, and a whole range of, of these uh, mobile uh, applications have since evolved, right? Okay. 